Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of How to Record Heavy Drums. Again, just kind of getting the feet wet with this episode. Today, we're gonna take a look at how close your mics should actually be to your drums. What sounds better? Close, backed off, is there a happy medium? Let's find out. So we did the first episode in this series a couple weeks back, got a lot of good response. It wasn't a huge hit or anything like that, but I'm still very happy to have a lot of you guys along for the ride. Just uh, want to give you a heads up here. We're starting a new channel in the SMG Discord. It's going to be called the SMG Drum Shop. I want to see you guys in there. Uh, bring me pictures of your drum sets, bring mixes, and uh, bring your multi-tracks because um, I think if there's something I can offer in terms of assistance, or guidance and whatnot, I want to be here to help you out and get better drum sets. That's what this whole thing is about. I just want to give a great big shout out to everybody at Sweetwater as well as Pearl Drums and Lawton Audio for helping make this series possible. I'm really happy to be working with all those brands over the course of this thing. Anyway, so I thought to start to get into a bit of the details and the nitty gritty would be an episode dedicated to how close your drum mic should be. Because um, on the Oldies But Baddies competition, I saw a few people who were micing their drums and they just had their mics jammed right up against the drums. And I'm like, that's not good. That's gonna cause a lot of problems when it comes time to mix. It all becomes a game of trade-offs. How close should the mics be to the drums versus how far away can you get away with having them before you just pick up too much spill from the cymbals and the other drums and whatnot. The idea is to be isolated, but not completely isolated. You do have to get the various elements of the kit to work together. Anyway, to illustrate that, I brought in Cam Flurry and I'm gonna show you guys a couple clips. Close mics versus backed off and show you not only how it works in a mix, but how the raw tracks should sound as well. Let's get to that right now. So. One of the big thing mistakes I see a lot of guys making is maybe getting the mics a little too close on the close mics, on the toms and the snare, that sort of thing. If we get in here, let's take a look. See, I've got these mics backed off to a reasonable distance and it really becomes what's called a trade-off game. How much can you back the mic off before you pick up too much spill from the other drums and the cymbals? These two mics in particular, the Tom 1 and Tom 2, can wind up picking up a lot of snare, actually. And that can become quite an issue. You might have to gate manually. The snare itself we've got backed off, and this is all a game of finesse as well, is how far can we get the snare mic back from the snare itself without picking up too much hi-hat bleed. This is kind of a fine art and uses a lot of trial and error to get it right. But what we're going to do here is we're going to do a beat like this right now with all these elements in place. And then we're gonna put the mics a lot closer and hear the difference of what we get. Okay, so we're back. What we've done is we've put the Tom mics in super close on the skins. Now this will give us less spill, but this is also going to mean a big difference in the actual tone of the drums as well. So you can see we've got the snare mic really in close there as well. So this is going to mean more EQ, more futzing with the tracks, more time mixing, in my opinion anyway been my experience i could be wrong i mean like this is the first time i've ever mic'd up the drums with the lawtons like this um i really do like the sounds we're getting what do you think cam oh it's sweet <laughs>
in my opinion anyway, what happens is when you get the mics in a little bit too close like this is the drums wind up sounding a little bit on the boxy side. And you're going to have to use a lot more EQ to get something usable out of them. Trade-off here is, yes, you're going to get less spill because you turn the mics down to compensate. But honestly, if you put your ear right next to a drum like this, it's going to sound very, very bad. You know, if you back the mic off a couple of inches, you're going to get much better results. You just have to get a drummer, somebody like Cam, who can control the drums and not beat the living shit out of the cymbals so you don't get too much spill. All right, so we moved over to the desktop here. I just kind of want to show you guys how things look on the DAW here. Um, just in Reaper, show you what's going on. And a lot of you guys mentioned how much you appreciated me showing you know, the files without any effects going on. And look, I get it. We're just starting to get into things here. If you're wondering you know, about angles, that kind of thing, where you should be pointing the mics, that's going to be kind of another episode. I just want to kind of illustrate the fact that you can definitely put your mics way too fucking close to the drums, and it's going to be a detriment. So what I got here are just the mics thrown up kind of in a logical fashion, how I would have the faders. And this is what we're getting with the mics you know, jammed up against the heads. Now, about the only mic I'm happy with there is the kick because that's set to its optimum placement, which is just inside the shell there. And we've got the Solomon Low Freak going alongside it. And if we do the same thing, we look at the first take there. This is the same thing with the mics backed off to where I would normally put them. They're just back, you know, maybe one or two finger widths. Listen to how big of a difference this makes. You know, especially on those tom rolls. Take a listen here. You know, that's going to need a lot more work to get them to sound halfway decent. And this is the thing. It doesn't matter how much EQ you throw at it. I mean, the fundamental of the drum sound has changed because of that closeness to it. Like, that's clean. This is just kind of, you know, nasty and boxy. And again, this is something that kind of comes with experience. You got to do a little bit of trial and error and find out what works best. I mean, the big savings here, I mean, like if we just say pull up Tom mic number two here is the mic is closer to the drum on this segment right here. You can just hear that ringing out too. And... I'm not really hearing a gigantic difference in spill, though, to be honest with you. If we if we go with the, the far away mic to the close mic, just a lot more ring, a lot more to deal with. The far away mic, the, the mic that's backed off by a couple inches, though, there's just there's a lot more top end in the sound of the drum. There's a lot less boxiness going on as well. Here I thought uh, we'd get a little less spill, but it does look like I didn't really adjust the mics all that much. Um, generally, the louder the source, the more you can back the mic off, mic off, the less spill you get. I don't think that's the case here. At least it's a case of anything being, you know, noteworthy. I mean, maybe we throw all three Tom mics on. We're going to see a difference here. Again, I'll start with the close, the very close mics, and then we'll, we'll go to the, to the uh, backed off. So very close. Let's listen to the spill across all three mics. There's a lot of hum there, but let's take a listen to it with them backed off a little. Okay, definitely sounds like there's more spill there right here, even though... So it's a bit of a trade-off, like most things recording drums. So with the mics closer, we're getting a lot more ring on the toms because, you know, they're going to resonate as you're hitting the other drums. That's just the nature of the instrument. We're Unfortunately, we're bringing that sound a little bit more forward. As we back the mics off, we're getting a little bit more top and spill 
into those close mics. So it really becomes a question of how much can we get away with? We need to find the happy medium. Uh, for me, like I said, it's usually about two finger widths seems to work the best. And all I'm doing is aiming the mic at where the stick is going to hit the skin. That's pretty much my rule of thumb. We want to get it in a spot where it's far enough away from the drum that it's not going to, not going to, you know, give that honkiness. It's not going to give that boxiness. We, we want to get close enough so we get not a lot of spill, but we also want to keep the hell out of the way of the drummer. So that's three things you have to keep in mind when you're placing your mics. Now on the snare and the toms, I'm using these. This is the LS203. They're very susceptible to plosives, so I'm going to talk in it sideways like this. But this is an end address condenser, and it's like the capsules here. And you've got this great big null section back here. So these are very, very directional mics for condensers. Uh, they've got to be a, some of the most narrow field condensers I've ever uh, worked with. Like the, the off-axis rejection is just spectacular, to be honest with you. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I think my absolute favorite drum mics ever are probably their Earthworks. They've got a wider pickup pattern. There's a, You do have to deal with a lot of spill. The transient attack on them is like second to none. These uh, these are pretty wicked too. So you know, thumbs up to Lawton. Uh, the guys at Sweetwater were telling me that the these are like Dave Grohl's first choice to mic up his kit with. So uh, yeah, don't take my word for it. Take Dave Grohl's word for it. Um, they're not outrageously expensive mics, but they're not super cheap either. Uh, but they're pretty fucking cool. I say, you know, it doesn't need a lot of treatment to get them to sound good. That's for sure. Now, if we go on the snare bus, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to just take a listen to the top and bottom mic here and close versus far away. Listen to what's going on here. So here's further away. This is no effects. And then a little, then like, you know, the, the closer right over the rim kind of sound. It's not as severe as it is in the Tom mics, but I'm still hearing a little bit of that mid-range boxiness. When we look at the process track, you know, we get the same thing here. Listen, listen to the initial Tom fill here and the first little bits of snare, and then we're going to go to what the mic's backed off. Check this out. Here we go. Now, those toms are sounding a little bit boxy. And if we go over here to the backed off mics. I really like those toms like that, and I really like how the snare has got a nice, more even crack. Now, again, I got to say, this comes down to the mic a lot. I can back that off a little bit and not have to worry about as much spill. Here, when the mics are closer, it's just like... It's pretty good, I got to say, but when we get into the tom fields, it's like, yikes. Yeah, that just sounds kind of harsh, especially on that floor tom. The first to couple toms are boxy, but the, the floor tom's like, yikes. That's a little bit cleaner. I like the sound of that right there. I feel like I can put a bit more bottom on that on that snare though. I'm gonna dial that in right here on the uh, Trident 808. Oh yeah. A little bit of bottom, a little bit of top, but if we listen to that now on the closer miking. Still not bad, but it's not doesn't have quite the nice top end zing this does. That just sounds nice. Okay, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention here, okay, especially for you Reaper guys here who might be using some live effects, is always do a ping check when you use your Rhea insert. And uh, this is something um, I should be doing a whole lot more. So I've got a couple of buses here. I've got, this is my drum crush bus, which is going out to a stereo compressor. And then I've got my drum bus itself, which is going to the Taylor Magnet Magnetismus, which is kind of like a tape saturation simulator slash VCA compressor. I've got a review coming up on that real soon. 
It's really, really wicked. And I've got inserts here on the kick and snare. Those are going out to my tridents and my drama compressors. And then I've got, you know, the room mics going out to the Stam 1176s. Those are all really important that we do ping checks to make sure everything's in proper phase. And what I mean by that is we just go into reinsert, hit ping detect, and see that move to six samples. And this changes every time you load Reaper up, which kind of blows, actually. Um, somebody, I don't know if a script exists to be able to do this on your all your reinserts at once, but this will get you a cleaner sound just going through all your, your live runs. Wow, that went from like, what, negative six to, you know, positive three? Damn. You know, this is all just, this is just number of samples. And a couple guys in the initial how to record heavy drums intro thing there, a couple of them were saying, oh, something's off with the kick. And turns out it was a couple of things. Um, I was hitting the magnetismus way too hard with the kick drum. So it was kind of squashing the extreme bottom end and making it sound a little bit farty. And I didn't do a ping detect uh, before I mixed them down, so it was kind of affecting. So now that I've got everything pinged out correctly, just going to kind of adjust that snare EQ just a touch here. Pretty good right there. Let's try it one more time. Almost got it. Kicks pretty bright. And yeah, that's the thing. I mean, kind of, yeah, it's like, I do appreciate the criticism, guys. It's like, because I was kind of listening to that and going, oh, yeah, something's a little weird there because I, I was pulling up an earlier mix. And I'm like, well, the kick sounds amazing here. What went wrong? So, yeah, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. You know, always take constructive criticism and try and make your work better. So now I've got this lovely kick sound going on. I mean, wow, it might be even a little too bright, but damn. You know, and uh, the difference was I was using the SSL channel strip here. If I take the reinsert off and just go SSL native channel strip. This is a great plugin. I really like the sound of that. Just a little EQ and compression. Okay. Oh, we took out 10 dBs at 800 hertz there on the kick. Ah. Let's let's uh, let's drop that on. Let's take eight hundred, you know, ten dBs out at eight hundred hertz on the, on the kick here. Oh, hang on, that's the snare. Whoops. <laughs> So what I mean about human perception being flawed, it's like you think you're EQing one thing, you're EQing something else. You know, you got to double check that. Maybe we should put some labels on these racks here. Hey, the kick, snare, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's take a look. What, what do I have going on here again? Let's just take a peek here. So I had a bit of a cut going on here at uh, 10 dBs at 800 hertz. So I'm just kind of trying to match up. Um, it, that is a really great plugin, but we go to we go to the real stuff and it's just got, uh, it just kind of rounds things off in a, in a way that software doesn't. Now, a lot of the outboard stuff I'm using here is affordable. You know, the stamp stuff you can afford when you can get it and make sure it's in stock before you order. Um, I've got no problem with the quality there, but apparently, you know, production slowdowns and whatnot. Just be real careful when you order from them. Make sure the thing is actually in stock. Um, other, that's how I can recommend that stuff. Um, but, you know, the, the Trident 808s and the Drummer DL241s are super affordable pieces of gear. And they just sound fantastic. And like I said, I do prefer them over software. The great thing is they're kind of set and forget. You know, and you got everything kind of broadly set in. And then you can just kind of dial stuff in. So I'm going to just kind of take a little bit of that 800 hertz. Zone. I'm going to boost it up first so we can hear it. And then I'm going to take it out. Yeah, you hear that? It's kind of duck, 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 duck. Yeah, quack, quack kind of sound. And we just take that out. I had a huge scoop going on that. Let's take a listen. This is going to be hilarious. Wow. 
Take a bit of bottom up on that. Nope, a little farther there. Kind of peeking out on the EQ there. Let me take that level down a touch. Take the EQ off. Wow. That is cool. I kind of like that. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Now, if we, if we compare that against, you know, software one more time, kind of getting into an un unintentional EQ lesson here, but hey, it is what it is. Software, hardware. Yeah, take the. There we go, that's sweet. Of course, you can dial in as much top end as you want on, on that, you know, to taste. I might be overdoing it just a slight bit. But, yeah, you hear it's just a little bit softer sounding on the edges compared to the software. And that's basically just the nature of digital versus analog. Analog tends to round things off, especially when you really start pushing it hard. And that's why it sounds pleasant. I do like that. I like that a lot. I am going to do a dedicated episode on mixing in hardware versus mixing in software and then doing what's, you know, I'm doing here is, which is a hybrid system. And I'm looking at, you know, that, uh, that roll music, um, analog subbing bus. I did a demo on last year. I'm thinking, Hmm, I'd really love to put that in here and start running a lot of my analog into that and then summing it through, say a pair of Cranborns or something like that. And then back in, cause that'll give it that much more flavor. Uh, the tangler is kind of doing the same kind of thing. I mean, like we take this in and out, you can hear the difference. It's like. That's with it off. Yeah, that's just lovely. So yeah, that's uh, that's closer mics versus backed off a little. I, we really went into depth on this episode, a little, probably a little more than I would have chosen to. But I just want to show you guys, it's like, look, you don't have to jam your mics directly up against the drum to get it to sound good. A little bit of distance is good. A little too much and you're going to run into a lot of spill issues. The trick is you have to figure out what works best for your situation and however the hell your drummer is playing. That's going to be a big part of it too. How hard is he hitting the cymbals versus how hard is he hitting the drums? That's something you need to work with your drummer at together and find the best solution for your particular situation. Some drummers are going to be a little more receptive than that than others. Uh, but then again, that's where professionalism comes in and being able to deal in that kind of situation. You know, drummers going to come in, you're going to want to be able to handle whatever they throw at you. You have to be the guy who they can go, they can trust. You know, you have to be the guy with the answers. So I don't know, call up a drummer friend, have him come out, you know, and do some experimentation with him, or if you play drums yourself, you know, do a few A-B recordings tests. Figure out what's going to work best for you. Anyway, going to see you back here again next Monday for another episode of How to Record Heavy Drums. Just want to thank Pearl, Sweetwater, and Lot and Microphones for helping out with all this stuff. Uh, if you guys have comments, you guys have questions, of course, please leave them below. But I'd also like to extend an invitation to you guys to come join the SMG Discord because we're starting a new SMG drum shop where I want viewers of this series to come in and show me pictures of your drum set, whatever recording setup you've got, and perhaps submit some mixes and maybe even some multi-tracks because I'd love to put them on the show and take you through my mix process and show you how I would approach it anyway. Now, if that sounds like something you'd like to be involved with and you want to get some help on recording your drums, follow the link in the description below, and I hope to see you in there. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.